She remembered Caterpillars is a puzzle game that follows in the footsteps of Jonathan Blow's The Witness, by having a vague and curious title that only barely relates to any part of the game's content. Oh, you thought I meant the open world thing? No. In every other way, the games differ greatly, especially given that She Remembered Caterpillars just uses a normal level select screen for its puzzles, albeit quite a beautiful one, rather than an expansive and, in some ways, excessive open world. Ah, The Witness. Why are you the way that you are? If you want to know why the game is called She Remembered Caterpillars, I genuinely don't know. I'll look it up now, and even though really I'm checking that now, well before I've even finished writing this review, for comedic effect I'm gonna leave this bit in the script to make it sound like I'm finding out live right as you're watching the video. A few moments later. Yeah, it, it still doesn't make any sense. She Remembered Caterpillars is a puzzle game where you move adorable little creatures about and try to get them all onto lily pads so they can helicopter off to sleep. Or something, that's what it looks like. From a more mechanical standpoint, you just need to fill each one of these pads with a creature and then the level is complete. So, what's the puzzle? Well, the creatures can be one of three different colours, and this causes problems because in this twisting, gloomy, subterranean phantasmagoria, their word, not mine, where you can go and what you can do are decided by your colour. Oh dear. A red creature can walk across a red bridge when a blue creature can't, but the blue creature can walk across a separate blue path. Separate but equal. Forget I said that phrase. The caterpillar bridges show which colour can cross, whereas gates, like this, block creatures the same colour as them. It's pretty simple, but what gives the game depth is how the creatures can combine and uncombine to form new colours. A blue and yellow can merge to form a green, and now they can get across a blue bridge because the creature contains blue, but it can't get through a blue gate for the same reason. Merging is absolutely necessary to complete the levels by shipping creatures around to platforms that they couldn't reach on their own. If you merge a red and blue, the combined creature can walk across a red, blue or purple bridge and then uncombine on the other side. But a creature containing any yellow wouldn't be able to pass through a yellow gate. Or, in a more complicated situation, a purple creature wouldn't be able to pass through an orange gate because the red component of the red-blue-purple clashes with the red component of the red-yellow-orange. On top of the bridges and the gates, you've also got snail bridges which only link up when creatures are sat on all the necessary buttons. Some levels also contain colour-changing devices that remind me of the mechanic from Star Wars Pit Droids, which hopefully at least someone watching will have played so the reference isn't wasted. And as you progress through the game, more concepts are added in. She Remembered Caterpillars is split into eight acts of five levels each, and every act introduces either a new mechanic or a new colour of creature to work with. I have to say, I loved these puzzles. I thought they were a great concept, not original by any means, but very well executed, and both the difficulty and method of solving were perfect. I've mentioned a few times how I think that puzzle video games should force you to solve in some part by doing, and that's absolutely the case with She Remembered Caterpillars. When a level starts, the first thing you'll do is start combining creatures and sending them across bridges, and just getting a basic idea of all the different permutations of positions that you'll have in this level. Then you start to think a little more deeply. You look at some of the lily pads and realise, okay, to get two creatures into here, I'm going to need to get a red and a blue onto this platform. And now you've got a more specific goal to try to reach. So, if you're anything like me, levels involve this wonderful back and forth of moving the creatures around and seeing where they can go, and then working on the level backwards to see where certain colours are going to need to be. It's that mix of satisfying puzzle solving with wonderful tactile gameplay that makes a good puzzle game. And of course that tactility here is helped massively by the gorgeous art for the game's levels and the adorable animations. I also mentioned that I thought the game's difficulty was exceptional, and that's in part because it makes great use of the roller coaster gameplay curve that most video games should strive for. In a first person shooter, this curve would represent tension. It would rise as a section becomes more tense and action focused, and then drop down after you defeat a tricky boss, and the game gives you some time to rest and recuperate. In a puzzle game, however, this curve should represent difficulty, and She Remembered Caterpillars nails that. At the start of an act, the levels can be quite simple because the game is teaching you a new mechanic, but as the act progresses they become more difficult and ramp up into some genuinely tough challenges that can take a good while to solve. What I was most impressed by is how, even when a level was proving incredibly tricky, and despite multiple occasions where I would take my hands away from my laptop and confidently assert, nope, no way, this one just can't be done, 
I was never actually frustrated by a level, and something about the design meant that I was always confident that I would work out a solution if I just spent a bit longer thinking about it. Now, I'm a huge fan of puzzles, but I'll freely admit that sometimes I just give up if I'm not getting anywhere with a challenge after an extended period of time, but that never happened even on the levels that took the longest to solve. Just out of curiosity, I timed myself solving some of the later levels of the game, and you can see from this what I meant before about the roller coaster curve, with the length of time taken to solve a puzzle climbing from 2 minutes up to 5 minutes, all the way up to 20 minutes on a single level, but then drops back down to just over 5 minutes at the start of the next act. The roller coaster also finishes on a real high in the last level of She Remembered Caterpillars that ties together every previous mechanic from the game with one additional twist in such a great way that it felt more like an endgame boss battle than it did the last level of a puzzle game. Technically, there is a story that connects the levels together, which is where the caterpillar thing comes in, but it doesn't really make all that much sense. It's vaguely about a father and a daughter, I think, but it's also told through very, very short snippets of a conversation without a lot of detail. And these tiny snippets only appear between each level, and sometimes when the levels are long enough, once you get to the next line of text, you won't even remember what the last one said. The story does somewhat fit the game's darker visual aesthetic, but doesn't thematically tie in with the puzzles, and so it doesn't really matter whether you remember it or not. But while the story may not matter, and the title is a bit weird, everything else about She Remembered Caterpillars is building a highly satisfying puzzle game, and one that I will happily recommend. And because I forgot to add this in somewhere better in the script, the game has a free demo on Steam if you want to go and check it out. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. And to win your team the game, what small insect of the order Lepidoptera undergo the biological process of metamorphosis and become butterflies as their adult form? Oh yes, I know it. It's um the things that, uh, you know, the name of them is... <sighs> Pass.